Chronicles chapter 4. I'm going to pray and then let's get started. Lord, we're thankful to be able to gather in this place. We recognize your goodness this morning. We just thank you that this word is alive. Lord, today we just pray that the word would fall on fertile soil, hearts that are ready to receive it, no matter where we're at in our walks. Or I'm thinking of, you know, we're leaning into a topic of, of prayer. I know for myself, sometimes it's easy to think, oh, I, I, I kind of figured that thing out, so I'll just sort of check out today. But Lord, we just believe that your spirit wants to speak to us. And so here we are, we're ready to receive, and would you receive the glory today? Change us, Lord, so that when we leave this place, we would look a little bit different going out into our world, into our community, into our workplace, into our schools. We wanna continue to make a difference. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give it up for the worship team. July 2013 was an incredible month for me. You might be thinking, how come? Well, I'm gonna tell you. I was, so some, some of y'all know my story. I came from Los Angeles, California, landed here July 2nd, 2012. My wife always laughs at me. She's like, why do you remember all these dates? I don't know, I'm weird, so just bear with me. July 2nd, 2012, I come to Omaha, Nebraska. I came on a prayer in, in just straight faith. No place to live, no job. And uh, I was living with, with a really good friend of mine, so grateful and thankful for him, for like the first nine months that I was here. And then he dipped and took a job in Des Moines, and so I was homeless. I was like, I was sleeping uh, literally on the floor in his living room. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta look back at where you were, okay? I don't know what season you're in, but just look back for a second. So I'm living on the floor, and, and, uh, and I gotta find a place to live. And so I had another homie that was actually getting ready to buy a house, but he hadn't bought it yet. And so I was like in this interim, like, okay, what do I do? And I'm so thankful for Pastor Todd and Denise because they're like, hey, just come, come live with us for a few, few months and you know, it can kind of be your interim. And I'm so thankful and grateful for it because I learned so much. And if you know anything about them, that, that's what I love is there's so many new people to the church and you know, you show up into this building and this church started in a basement. They, they've been doing this thing. Like this isn't about platforms, but they've brought in tons and tons of people into their home to disciple them. So thank you for, for modeling that. And so I got the privilege of, of having this season and it was amazing. Well, on my last night, and I don't know if this was strategic or if this was the Holy Spirit, I think a little bit of both. But I was coaching their one of their twin boys, Blaze, and so we were at practice, and I was bringing him home, and so we showed up to dinner late. We get there, and there's like a whole crew there. Remember, this is my last night staying there. And so PT sits in his normal spot, and, and I sit right next to him, and you know they had a whole crew of people that were over, and some of them they knew very well, some of them they didn't know so well, and one of those people was this young girl named Jerrica. So this girl named Jerrica is sitting right across from me and PT in, in good fashion, you know, he loves to get to know people, so he's just peppering her with questions. And so I'm like disengaged, probably just super hungry after practice, like eating my food, but one by one as she's answering these questions, I think I just find myself like. <laughs> now if you know anything about my story, man, I, whew, I did not do relationships right. So I was on like a year and a half hiatus. I just was like, okay, God, if we're gonna get this thing right, first I need to get this thing right. And so I was like in a year and a half of just, like I, like I wasn't even looking, pursuing, like I was just fixing my focus on Jesus. Like, God, you gotta do something in me because I'm, I'm broken, I keep messing this thing up, so please help me. Well, on this particular uh, night, I'm like, man, what was that? <laughs> so I go to my bedroom, and I just remember praying a prayer like, okay, Lord, um, I don't know what just happened up there, but um, 
felt a little something, you know, in my belly. And if that's of you, would you just like <laughs> grow that? I don't know. And so for four months, uh, we just kind of hung out like with some friends and it was, honestly, it was awkward. Like I didn't, I didn't know how to do this thing God's way. So I needed like the Holy Spirit to lead me and guide me. Well, fast forward to November 10th of 2013, so this is like five months later. Um, we were at uh, his house off of 180th, which is like our, it's where the 180 ministry is at right now. Shout out 180, come on. And uh, I, I'll never forget this. We, there was a group of us that would go there sometimes on Sunday afternoons just to like pray and hang out. And we were there this one particular Sunday afternoon. And, uh, and I, I, the interesting thing is I was driving home from Rev like a week prior and I felt like the Holy Spirit said, okay, now you can pursue her. So I had been just like waiting for an opportunity to like let her know like, hey, so on this particular Sunday, she walks outside by herself in the, and it was like, it was frigid cold. November 10th, you know, November, you never know what you're gonna get in Nebraska. So she's out like in the backyard by herself, just kind of walking around. I'm thinking, what is she doing? And I feel like God's like, go get her. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready for this. Golly, your boy did had no confidence at this time. So I walk out there and I'm in a t-shirt and then I just kind of sit next to her and I'm like, I'm like nervous shaking but also cold shaking. So I'm sitting on a rock like looking at her like, hey, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> what do you feel like God's telling you to do over the next year? <laughs> like, I, and I keep peppering her with questions because I just can't, I just can't get to the point. So look at me and say, get to the point, OC. So finally I get to the point, I'm like, uh, here's what I feel like God's been doing in my heart. Uh, and I share with her and it was funny. <laughs> She's like, me too. I'm like, oh, praise God. Because <laughs> I, I was not spitting game. So let me just tell you, that was all God. <laughs> that was all God. Man, I wish, that was, I wish that was recorded so I could go back and just laugh at myself. So like later that afternoon, we go to a coffee shop and we, you know, we stay there for like three hours. Oh, it's like the beginning of falling in love. Do y'all, y'all remember that season? You know what I'm talking about? And the thing is, man, is like I was, at the time I was serving a lot at the church. I was working in medical devices, which was a pretty demanding gig. And, uh, and uh, you know, I was single and trying to work out and do all this sort of stuff. But man, I felt like I was talking to her 24-7. You know, just like shooting her text, hey, how's your day? What are you doing now? What's the Lord speaking to you? And then like we would just spend like all this time on the phone talking, like hours. Some of y'all are looking at each other because you're in that season right now. You're like falling asleep with each other on the phone. You know what I'm saying? Like there were nights she was working at this place and it'd be like, okay, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. There was one time, no joke, I think we fell asleep on the phone. I, I woke up and the, the call was still going. It was like five in the morning. <laughs> well, now here we are, eight years into marriage. <laughs> and you like walk into the door from a day at work and it's like, yo, how was your day? Good. <laughs> you know, you're laying in bed. All right, let's pray. Lord, thanks for blessing us today. I pray you give us some good sleep today. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. And it's so funny because it, it reminds me of, of the book of Revelation when Jesus is challenging all the churches and the church at Ephesus. He's like, yo, there's all these things I love about you, but this one thing I have against you, you've forgotten your first love. And here's what I found, maybe this won't relate with you this morning, but it does for me is I can get so busy doing things for Jesus that I stop talking to him. You know, and as a minister of the gospel, I start asking myself the question, man, why is my prayer life more powerful in public and less powerful in the secret place? It should be the opposite. You know, I think about the season of falling in love with my wife and it is kind of funny 
But there's something really powerful about that communication line being so strong. It's like the communication activates the heart and the heart activates the communication. And and the reality is, is, is what I wanna tell us today is that God has created you and I for an even deeper intimacy than what we experience man to woman in relationship. I mean, God longs to just talk to us. And I think sometimes we get a little bit, you know, psyched out about, man, like how do, you know, if you're a new believer in here, like I, I hear this all the time, like how do I pray? Like what do I say? And I think part of that is because sometimes what's modeled from the platform it's modeled with great intentions, and that might be the, the way that that individual connects with God. But I just want you to know today that, that prayer is simply just talking to God. The same way that, that I have conversation with Pastor Todd or with Cap or, or with some of my friends, remember, Jesus is our friend. We just come to him, we, we start telling him what's going on in our life. Maybe, maybe talking to God is awkward. I wanna encourage you, maybe this morning, you need to start journaling. Like, get your notes app out and just start journaling prayers. As I prepared for this week, I went back, and it's so interesting that I'm talking about this first love. I went back to the season in 2013 where I was falling in love with Jerrica, and I looked at this prayer journal that I had, and it was pages on pages on pages. And I was like, oh my goodness, yes, I have a prayer life, but it don't look like that. And so I, I, this, this whole week, I just feel like God has been stirring me up, and it all started in last week's message. I'm sitting right here on the front row. Pastor Todd is preaching about real revival, looking at the life of Josiah, saying it only takes one. You know, and in this particular message, he emphasized the power of reading God's word. And as I sat there and he, and he read 2 Chronicles 7, 14, that says, if my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and what does it say? And pray. If my people will humble themselves and pray. And in that moment when he said it, it just was like, boom. And all week long, I've been thinking about my prayer life and saying, God, forgive me for drifting in this area. I I wanna connect with you in a deeper way and, and maybe you can relate. Maybe your prayer connection has been off. Maybe the signal has been off. You know, recently I was thinking about how can I, how can I bring an illustration to, 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 to illustrate what I'm, what I'm trying to get to here. I recently upgraded my iPhone, but before I upgraded, I had this iPhone and I would plug it into the charger at night and I would wake up in the morning and it would still be on red. You ever, you ever had this? And it's so frustrating because you're like, Mm, Like, I need my phone to do what I'm called to do, and this thing has no juice, no power. What's up? I connected it to the source. Like, what's going on? I started to think, man, this is such a picture of you and I at times. Well, this happened for like a couple weeks, and I was frustrated. I didn't know what to do. We just happened to be over at the Global Leadership Summit over at Life Church, and one of their production guys that I'm friends with, we were just catching up, and I asked him if I could charge my phone, and I just kind of said something like, man, this thing doesn't really charge well, and he's like, ooh, I know what's going on. See, in your little charging port, sometimes there's like lint that gets caught in there, and it, and it disrupts the connection from the charger to the phone. He's like, let me, just give me a second. I'll grab a paper clip, which I looked on the internet and Apple doesn't recommend you use a paper clip. <laughs> but the homie grabbed a paper clip and he pulled out like two big pieces of lint. So he gets these pieces of lint out. Next thing you know, I plug this thing in and it's like, it's going, it's juicing, it's working. I started thinking, we're like the iPhone. Prayer is like the, it's, it's the charger and the, the, the outlet is like the power source. Like that's God. Prayer is just the vehicle that, that brings us the power and the juice, but every once in a while we got some lint. What's the lint like look like for you? What, what's disrupting your connection in this season? Is it laziness and busyness like PT talked about last week? Is it self-dependence and ego? Maybe it's substance, substance. I don't know what it is, maybe it's your job, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it's the blessing in your life that is actually prohibiting you from connecting with the blesser. 
And so it's interesting, we're, we're going through, you're like, get to the word of God, I will here in a second, but I gotta set this thing up. Because I believe that God wants us to pray some bigger prayers. He wants to connect with us in a meaningful way this week. And in 1 Chronicles chapter four, I love this because when PT put me on the calendar, man, I was just laughing. <laughs> I like get to the text and it's like, the descendants of Judah were Perez, Hezron, Camri, Hur, Sheol. The descendants of Etham were Jezreel. And I'm like, what am I supposed to tell these people? Just straight genealogy, chapter after chapter. I about gave up and was like, you know what? We're, we're gonna preach on Psalms this week. <laughs> Sorry, PT. We go into the secondary reading. We'll come back to First Chronicles. And really, First Chronicles at like a high level, as you're gonna see here, it's gonna, it's gonna really lay out the reign of King David. And we've seen some of this in the Old Testament already, but we're gonna kind of see it rehashed out again here in this particular text. But here at the beginning of First Chronicles, you've got all these genealogies. But I think this is, I think this is a word for us. I, th I don't wanna get past this, because I think this is good when it comes to our vision at this church, because you know that we are just, we are after developing what? Self-feeders. And you gotta recognize that all scripture is profitable. And so isn't it easy, I mean, raise your hand in here if you did this, you got to these genealogies and you're like, I'm going to the secondary reading. I did it a day or two, come on. But it's funny because you start reading this and then all of a sudden, there is this nugget in obscurity. It just kinda, and, and it's so out of the blue, like the way it reads is so different than what you're reading for like three chapters that you're like, hmm. Like, am I, am I supposed to pay attention to that? Like, that kind of that kind of hit me. And so we're gonna look at it today. It's called the prayer of Jabez. So, so if you're a note taker in here today, I want you to write this down. Today we're gonna talk about how to pray like Jabez. I think that there are some principles in here that we can grab onto. Now, this isn't the only methodology for prayer. There's all sorts of methods throughout scripture. So go do a prayer search this week. Go, go look at it. I mean, Jesus himself modeled it so well. Mark 1.35, very early in the morning. There you go. You see the priority of prayer right there. While it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. So he had priority and a place, and that's where he prayed. And I just believe that there are some people in here that you have that desire for it to be a priority, and you actually even might have a place, but when it comes to the method, you're like, I'm not really sure what to do. And listen, you're in good company, because the one thing that the disciples asked Jesus to train them in was what? How to pray. And that's where he lays out the Lord's Prayer. Go read the Lord's Prayer with a different lens. Look at the principles of the Lord's Prayer rather than the actual words. Because for years, I walked into churches and prayed that prayer, but my heart was disconnected. If we'll catch the, catch the principles, the actual prayer becomes a model, and now we can actually engage with it in a genuine way. Is anybody with me today? So this is what it does. And I want you to see this prayer of Jabez today because there's really four principles in here, and I want you to write these down today. Number one, the, 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 the principle is this. It's blessing, blessed to be a blessing. It's territory, influence to make an impact. It's, it's be with me or his presence, presence to fulfill purpose. And then you're gonna see the fourth one, it's protection. Protection to keep persevering. We'll come back to these principles, but I want you to see this starting uh, in, in verse number nine of First Chronicles chapter four. It says this. There was an, a man named Jabez who was more honorable than any of his brothers. His mother named him Jabez because his birth had been so painful. So all of y'all that desire to have kids, just do, come on now, pick a better name than Jabez. I mean, the, 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 the name means painful. You wanna talk about overcoming an identity, my goodness. <laughs> mom, what's my name mean? Painful. <laughs> Thanks, mom, appreciate it. It goes on to say this in verse 10. He was the one who prayed to the God of Israel. Isn't it so cool that 
His legacy wasn't one of pain, but it was one of prayer. I mean, there's not much that's said about Jabez. We can't go throughout the scriptures and like search more about what, this, about what his life looked like other than these two verses. But I love that. He didn't wallow or rest in like victim status, nor did he try pulling up his bootstraps and going at life in his own strength. He called upon the God of Israel. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. And here's what his prayer was. He said this. Oh, that you would bless me and expand my territory. Please be with me in all that I do and keep me from all trouble and pain. And I love this because this shows the heart of our God. And it says this, and God granted him his request. Now, before I get into these four principles of prayer on how to pray like Jabez, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna point our attention to something here because I think that this is really crucial in this hour of the church. Did you catch the first sentence of this particular section of scripture? It said that he was what? More honorable than his brothers. You will never be looked at as honorable without what? Honoring. And here's the thing, I want somebody to hear this. A spirit of honor unleashes the favor of God in your life. And I wanna speak specifically to the next generation right now that it will always be easier to tear something apart than it is to build something up. And that's why I believe Jesus said that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few, because it's easier to tweet about and commentate about the work than it is to do the work. And I just believe that there's just a spirit of dishonor in our culture today, and let's not bring that into the church. Can I get an amen today? Because the reality is this, you can't live a life of dishonor and expect to leave a legacy on this earth. And here's what I wanna say to somebody that maybe struggles with this, because let's be honest, if we're really honest, when I'm saying this, I'm looking at myself. Because I'm not perfect, and I have moments where I dishonor my wife, I have moments where I dishonor my children, I have moments where I dishonor my leaders, I have moments where I dishonor my friends. We all, we all have a propensity to struggle with it, but let me tell you, dishonor is almost always attached to insecurity or jealousy. But Jabez didn't fall victim to it. Isn't it so cool that he was known for his honor? Not only the honor that he demonstrated, but the honor that he received. So before we move any further, we look at God fulfilling this prayer, but could it be that God fulfilled this prayer because there was an honorable man that was praying this prayer that, number one, honored Yahweh, and number two, honored the people around him. Honor is a big deal. And when you look at this, uh, this word for, for favor, in the Hebrew, it's the word nikbad, which is actually the root word for the word that we use for glory, and it actually means weightiness. So I want you to catch this. When you have honor on your life, you actually walk in glory. When you walk in honor, there's like a weight on your life, the weight of God's goodness on your life. You felt it, have you not? I've been in rooms, I've been in rooms when the word of God was being spoken. I remember, uh, I forget her first name, her last name's Strickland. She came and did like a talk for all, the whole church in Omaha at Within Reach. And when she got on this platform and preached the word of God, there was just a weight. There was a glory that rested on her. And it's like, man, do you ever feel that? You just get around people and you're like, ooh, man, like, I can't really put words to it, but there's just a, there's, a, there's a weightiness on your life. I just see the favor of God on your life. Could it be that they figured out the power of honor, of living an honorable life? So I want us to catch that. I don't want us to just go straight to what Jabez walks out here without catching his character. His character was one of honor. But the first thing that Jabez prays for, I want you to, uh, jot this down, this statement. And this, is, this should be our prayer. Lord, I wanna be blessed to be a blessing. There it is, blessed to be a blessing. He says, oh, that you would bless me. And I think this is so, it's so, this is such an, a, a tricky thing in, in the church when we talk about blessing. Because we just sang about it even. Like, God, I'm not after your hand. I want your face. And, and there's something really powerful about 
you know, I really do believe that there is something really powerful about a motivation of this. God, I'm not just seeking blessing from your hand, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm actually after, in, in asking for the blessing, I'm, I'm more concerned with the blesser, like being connected to, to the God that made me, that knows me, that in Psalm 139 this week, knows the hairs on my head and has more thoughts about me than the grains of sand. Like that's who our God is. So, so, so I just believe this, that if we, if we ask for the blessing of God and it's all about the blessing and we forget the blesser in the midst of it, I believe that's what sets us up to potentially be ruined when we receive the blessing of God but we forget where it came from. But here's the thing, why would we not ask God for the blessing? I wanna ask God for the blessing because when I do get blessed, I wanna know where it came from. I don't wanna think that it was just me, myself, and I. My bootstraps, my good gifts, my strength, my good looks, whatever the case is. Come on, you with me? We wanna know where that blessing comes from. And we, we, we need to know that God pours out favor on his people. Psalm 512 says this, surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. Look at Genesis 26 with Isaac. Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. The man began, began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. And in the church, we wanna talk about God doesn't want, ooh, that's a weird, oh, let's not say that word. No, I get it. It's not name it and claim it. it it's not health and wealth. But it is undeniable that if you and I walk with God, that we will not walk in a life of blessing, not one without trial, but we will walk in the blessing of God if we are surrendered and submitted to his spirit. So why not come to him and say, God, I wanna be blessed to be a blessing, and that's the why. Check it out in Genesis 12 too. I will make you into a great nation, he's talking to Abraham here, and I will what? I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and here it is, and then you will be a blessing. So I felt like the Lord said this to me, Michael, <laughs> when he addresses me as Michael, I know, whew, I better listen. If you just keep praying for me to meet your needs, then you're gonna have nothing to give away. So, so here's the thing, the key is our motivation in asking for blessing. Our motivation to pray for blessing isn't so that we can operate like lakes, but it's so that we can operate like rivers. We ought to be the vessels that the blessing of God can flow through. Come on, are you catching this, church? This is, this is so good that we, we should have a desire to live a life of constant generosity. We're just a vessel. He just flows it down to us so that it can get through us onto the people around us. That's how he moves and that's how he works. And I love it because I wrote this down. Giving people aren't greedy people and greedy people aren't giving people. Proverbs 11, 24 and 25 says the world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. The one who blesses others is abundantly blessed. Those who help others are helped themselves. Which leads into the second principle that Jabez prays for. So number one, he says, God, would you bless me? And then the second thing that he prays for is this. So here's what it says. Oh, that you would bless me and what? Expand my territory. <laughs> These are just the principles of God. Proverbs 11 just said it. The world of the generous, when we're blessed to be a blessing, it gets larger and larger. Expansion of territory. Expansion of influence. And it's so funny because we were, we were at this meeting this week with like some CEOs and they brought in this speaker from California and we were laughing about this. This chick just like laid it down. Talking about like, hey, you know, and I, and I love this because I'll just, I'll, I'll kind of outflow what was like put into my spirit this week. But she was sharing from the parable uh, in Matthew chapter 13, the parable of the wheat and the tares. Do you remember this? 
It says that a good farmer planted good seed in a field. But then what happened? The workers what? They fell asleep. And that's when the evil one came in and, and, and planted the tares. And so the wheat and the tares start growing up in this field and they wake up, they're like, oh boy, <laughs> oh snap. And so she's like, yo, we gotta stop sucking our spiritual binkies, get off the sidelines and start taking territory and taking land. And when we think about the spheres of influence in our culture, education, government, uh, um, business, and there's, pretty more, there's much more that I'm not saying right now. I think of like sports and athletics. It's like we, we can't be afraid to go into those spaces and places and take the ground that God is calling us to take. And that was Jabez's heart when it came to this particular prayer is that there were some people, some evil people in the territory around them. And what Jabez's prayer was is, hey, we wanna, we wanna go take this land. We desire to take more land, why? so that the one true God could be made known. And that should be our same desire. It's not, I don't want influence so that the people can look at me. I want influence so the people can see the one that is in me. And when you and I start to steward our lives in this way, it gives us new meaning and purpose to walk into these environments. And I just wanna tell the church this because we don't talk about this much from, from, from the platform. But I'm so thankful, and he would never say this, but I'm gonna say it, because he gave me the microphone. But our pastor models this so well, and I'm so thankful that I get to follow him in this way. Because yes, he shepherds this body so well, and he's equipping the saints for the work of ministry, but he also recognizes that he's a disciple, and the mandate that we received was to go into all the world and make disciples. And so I think about his life, and if you turned on ESPN a couple times this season, you probably heard him calling a game. No, not many people know that. But I get to talk to my good friend about him going to these places and laying hands on players, praying for them. Sitting on benches next to coaches, asking them how their lives are going and praying for them. Sending gifts to the, to the color commentator that you're working with. I mean, and I'm not trying to steal his glory, but I'm trying to make a point here that, that we've been called to break these four walls. It's not about right here, right now. We're called to go into the world. And I'm so thankful that I'm surrounded by friends and people on this staff and team that recognize that. My friend Cap goes and starts a digital media company. Pastor Adam in the back has a photography company. I'm so thankful that this week, on Monday night, I'm gonna fly to Nashville and I'm gonna speak to a bunch of business leaders on Tuesday morning. So what I want you to hear is I'm not saying, hey, look at us. I'm trying to say, follow our example as we follow Christ. There is ground to take. And will we be like Joshua and Caleb? Or the 10 other spies that said, I don't know if I belong. I don't know who I am. I don't know if I can stand up for Christ in that environment. No, he's called you and I to be salt and light, to be a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Take the basket lamp off this week and let your light shine before men so that they may see his good works. That's what he's called us to, and that's what Jabez is praying for you. It makes me think of Ephesians 3.20. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us. Remember, we don't go in our own strength to accomplish inf infinitely more than we might ask or think. So teacher, go with a new purpose in the school this week. Government official, walk uprightly. Honor the word of God. Media, Let's share some good news this week. Healthcare, recognize that Jehovah Rapha is in you and can give you divine wisdom for whatever you're treating. Business, no shortcuts. No, no greediness. We honor, we honor God by honoring the people that we serve. And I love that, I love this, that ministry is not an industry, it's service to one another and we're all called to full-time ministry. So this should be our prayer and our heart. God, expand my territory. So what happens is God blesses us 
he expands our influence. And then I love this number three because then all of a sudden he's praying this, and please be with me in all that I do. And anybody who's been blessed and anybody who's seen their influence grow, you get to this place where you're like, oh my goodness, I could have never done this in my own strength. God, don't ever leave me. Don't, don't, don't leave me. Don't, do not leave me, it will not be good. And I was thinking of a picture that I could share with you about when I experienced this once. And um, uh, PT and I have an incredible mentor. We talk about him about every other message, so get used to it. His name's Tom Greenwald, Dr. Greenwald. He was our team orthopedic surgeon at Iowa State. And isn't it funny that he invested in both of us, but we were there 12 years apart. Sorry, I just dated your age, but um, <laughs> about once a year he takes us on a trip and we go down and we kiteboard. And this particular one was down in Texas. You remember this? So we're like in the golf area. It's, you know, it's not super deep. But it's like a big enough area that like this guy took us out on his jet ski to where like you can't see the land. Like you're just, you're in the middle of the water. Talk about expansion of territory. I mean, this is like the picture. Uh, where am I? <laughs> oh Lord, if this guy leaves me, I don't know how I'm getting back. This isn't gonna be good. And I remember like we're out here practicing and oh, talk about, if you just wanna get frustrated, go try to kiteboard. Okay, if you need a challenge, if you're pretty comfortable in life, just go try kiteboarding. Just be careful though now, that thing will take you on a ride. And uh, so we're practicing and this and that, and I don't know if you remember this, PT, but the, the homie had to dip to go like meet somebody else, so he dips out on his jet ski, and we're just out there in like the middle of this, this gulf. And, and, it's, and it's crazy because I'm thinking, I know I'm safe, I can touch, I'm not gonna like drown out here. But the guy that was with us was from the area. He knew everything about this territory. And there was something just a little bit unsettling when he left us. And I was like, oh man, like there was kind of some safety and comfort when the guy that knows everything is with, like what if this kite just takes me for a ride? For a ride? And PT's like, all right, see you in heaven, bro. Like, it's been nice knowing you. And I was thinking, man, this is like, this is probably a lot like what it feels like to pray this sort of prayer or like to, to have this feeling of like, God, you've, you've, you've called me out into the water. Cause you know what? Some of us are comfortable playing in the kiddie pool, right? You know, you, you dig the sand out and you pour the water and those little kids are playing right next to the ocean and it's fun for them. But then there comes a point where you gotta walk out into the deep. And that's the picture that I get. It's like, some of us, we've been playing it safe. And, and so this whole idea of, pr this, this idea of praying for, for God's presence to fulfill our purpose, what if, it, that, what, 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 what if the, the problem right now is we haven't allowed God's, God to take us into the deep, and so we don't even need to pray for his presence because we got it in our own strength. The invitation is, we should all get to a place where, man, I get up and I put my two feet on the, on the ground or I drop to my knees daily and I'm like, God, I need your presence to lead these kids. I need your presence to be faithful in this marriage. I need your presence to love and serve my neighbors and be on mission in our community. I need your presence to lead. We should long for his presence and his power, and this is what Jabez is praying for. And then we move to number four. He says this. Oh, that you would bless me and expand my territory. Please be with me in all that I do and keep me from all trouble and pain. So our, so our prayer should be this, protection to keep persevering. He recognized that if these things were to be true of his life, that he was gonna come up against some evil, against some trouble. And it reminds me of the passage in 1 Peter where it says, stay alert. I think this is 1 Peter 5.8, it says, stay alert, watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember, he prowls like a roaring lion. He is not the lion of the tribe of Judah. You better recognize what's inside of you. 
I love this quote from Chris Hodges. He said this, if you aren't butting heads with the devil, you might be walking with him. This, this is so real for me right now. I see, I can just like, the, the longer you go in this thing, it's like you start to just, you understand the game more. Like there are just some of you that you're like the freshman out there on the football field. It's just like, you're just trying to like play to play. You're like, okay, I don't know what, uh, I don't know what uh, formation this is. I, I think I might've forgot the call from the coach, but I'm out here and my uniform's getting dirty. And then, you know, you keep walking this thing out. And I'm, I would imagine that if PT was up here as a quarterback, he would say his freshman year, things were probably just so fast. But by the time he's a senior, it slows down a little bit. Ah, oh, I see you, Will Backer. You're trying to blitz me right now. And that's kind of how this, this walk works with Jesus. Like, we should be asking God for awareness of the battles that, that are coming against us. And, and that's what I just sense, like, even in my own season right now. It's like the enemy, he's trying to come against my family right now. And it's like, I see you. I'm gonna expose you. And I know who protects me. I know who goes with me. Psalm 139 from our reading this week said this, and I love it. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go, go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will what? Will guide me and your strength will support me. So guess what? I'm standing up to you, devil, because I know who's behind me. I know who's in me. I know who's all around me. And even though I'm surrounded, I know how to fight my battles because I know who surrounds you. And I think about Luke when the enemy comes to tempt Jesus. He says that God had given him all authority on earth. But in Matthew chapter 28, this is after Jesus went to the cross and died for you and I and shed his blood. Jesus says to his disciples right before, he says, go into all the world and make disciples. He says, I have all authority in heaven and on earth. You gotta understand the authority that you walk in. Every room that you walk into, you have the highest spiritual authority in Christ Jesus. And so you hear this, don't over-spiritualize everything, but I'm here to tell you, over-spiritualize everything. Yes, we're not turning rocks over looking for the enemy in every you know, situation we walk into, but here's what I'm here to declare today, is that when you're going in the boardroom tomorrow for that meeting, before you step into that room, pray and declare the authority of God over that room that God would strengthen you as you walk into that meeting room. When you're walk, teacher, <laughs> where you at? This is really gonna be coming handy for you because I know all those devil students you're working with at school. <laughs> Sorry, students. I'm just saying, y'all crazy. So when you, before you go into your classroom, it's not ridiculous for you to pray over that classroom. There is power in it. And so you see here, Jabez, Lord, I wanna be blessed to be a blessing. I, I, I pray for influence to make what? An impact. Lord, I'm praying for your presence so I can fulfill your purpose, not mine, yours. And Lord, I know I'm gonna need protection if I'm gonna persevere. So I just gave you, I gave you a, a prayer model that you can pray every single day this week. So take this with you, take this into your secret place. P pray this with your family at the dinner table this week. Train your kids in this prayer model and watch how as you and I reconnect with our Savior in prayer, how it translates to walking in his presence and power this week. The victory, the victory is yours because the victory is his, it's already done. He said it is finished, let's walk in it this week. Lord, we thank you so much for this word. We thank you for the little nugget right here in 1 Chronicles chapter four. This scripture that is an obscure scripture. 
we ask that today, Lord, that you would just challenge us. Maybe it's just one of these categories. Maybe we've been just disconnected in prayer all along and today you're just challenging us to begin praying again. Or maybe one of these particular areas really, really stands out to us that we've just been kind of playing it a little bit safe. And if we're really honest, we're living a life that we can manage in our own strength. Lord, I pray, I pray that you would blow the lid off of that, that you would take us into the ocean, into the deep waters where we need your presence, where we need your favor, where we need your spirit. Lord, if you say go, like in Isaiah chapter six, we will say, yes, Lord, send me. I declare that over the church today. And in this moment, I wanna pray for the person that walked into this place today and what's swirling around in their minds is I've never talked to God. As a matter of fact, you guys have been singing about this good God and I, I don't see him as a good God. I thought he was out to get me. Today, I pray the revelation of your goodness would settle into the hearts that have yet to know you, that they would know that they have a heavenly Father that will never leave them nor forsake them. And I pray for the person who, whose earthly father was a bad demonstration of your character. I pray that that face would not be transported onto the heavenly Father. Today, we declare that you're a good, good Father. And I pray that today you would be calling your children home, those that have run from you. In Jesus' name. Before I say amen, if y'all would just stand with me for just a moment here. As we closed out that prayer, there were maybe some of you in here where God was ministering to your heart. And if you were really honest, you would say, yeah, I've never connected with Jesus in that way. It's okay, you're in the right place. Every single person in this room that has been their knee to Jesus and said yes to that relationship was right where you are at today. And I'll never forget the moment that I made peace with God in 2007 in a Hollywood video parking lot. And here's the beauty. I had a friend that was bold enough to share the truth with me and the truth went like this. He asked me a question, he said, Mike, if today was your last day, would you be in heaven? And I said, yeah, and he said, why? And I said, I'm a good person. He said, how good? I said, well, I'm pretty good. He said, okay, let me just show you God's standard of good. He took me to the 10 commandments. When he got through one, two, three, and four, I was like, oh snap, I'm not quite as good as I thought I was. He said, yeah, that's called missing the mark. It's called sin. We've all, we've all fallen short of the glory of God, all of us, all humanity. No, no, not one is righteous. And the reality is, is because we've missed the mark, there's a debt on our life. There's a payment. And so the picture that I get is, it's like when you and I buy a car and, and we, we take out some debt, we take out a loan. Like, I owe the bank a payment. And so each month I make my payment. Well, Curtis looked at me and he said, there's only one way to clear this debt and it's the blood of Jesus. You can't work this debt off of your life. You can't do enough good things for this debt to go away. There's only one way the debt goes away and it's receiving by faith what Jesus did on the cross. And so he shared the gospel. He said, Jesus came and lived the perfect life that you couldn't. He died the death that you deserve. He hung on that cross and he bridged the gap between you and a holy God. And all you have to do is receive the free gift. This is what grace is called. So going back to the illustration of the car, grace looks like this. It looks like somebody that you don't know going to the bank and paying off your loan. But every single month you keep sending in payments to the bank 
as if that loan hasn't been paid off. Wouldn't you be angry if that was your situation? But this is how we live our life. Jesus already paid the debt in full. When he hung on the cross, he said, it is finished. And yet, in our own self-righteousness, and our own good works, we're trying to pay this debt off in our own strength. And I'm here to declare, just like Curtis Taylor did for me, that it is done, it's paid for. You just need to be made aware of it. So today, you're being made aware of it. Your debt has been wiped away if you will just receive it. If you will receive forgiveness, if you will repent of your sin and say, God, I wanna follow you. And so that's the invitation today. And if I'm speaking to you, wherever you're at, you could be in the back or in the front. As the band plays, make your way forward and I would be my privilege to lead you in the same prayer that Curtis Taylor led me in in 2007 in a Hollywood video parking lot. Come on, it's your day. Maybe I'm talking to somebody online, it's your day. Come on, if, you're, if your palms are sweaty, it's your day. If you feel chained to your seat, it's your day. Come on, band, go ahead and play. If that's you, make your way forward, come on. Come on, let's celebrate. So proud of you. But I gotta share this, this picture. You could be online, go ahead and stay here. We're gonna pray in a second. Maybe this is for somebody in this place or, or for somebody online, but the picture as they were singing that song was, you, you know those like heavy, weighty blankets? The, the picture that I got was the, there, there was like a, a garment of heaviness on somebody's life a, a garment of shame, a, a garment of maybe even depression and heaviness. And I'm just telling you, God wants to take that garment off today and put a new garment on you, a garment of freedom and a garment of praise. So I don't know if I'm speaking to somebody in here, but if that's a word for you, I want you to come forward. If that's you, you're turning, tuning in online or maybe in the future you're listening to this. I'm just gonna wait 10 seconds. But if you know I'm speaking to you, there's no shame in this place today. Yeah, come on. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, a new garment. A new garment. Yeah, a new garment. A new garment. Yes, a new garment. A new garment. A new garment. Well, if y'all are ready, I wanna lead you in this prayer. This is just your heart connecting with your Father. If I could get a couple people to surround them and just lay hands, please. Say, Lord God, I invite you inside to be my God, to be my Savior, to be my friend. Today I turn from my sin and I put my hope and trust in you. Fill me afresh with the Holy Spirit. We pray that you would lift off the garment of heaviness. And Lord, today I put on a garment of freedom, a garment of praise, 
and I walked in heavy, but I'm gonna leave here today light. Jesus, thank you for moving in me. Help me to love you and to continue to love people. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, 